The doctor told me I needed to burn some fat, so I'm grilling a steak. Today, I'm going to recap a 2013 action sci-fi film called The Colony. In the not-too-distant future, Earth's environment has deteriorated so badly that a new ice age has engulfed the world, forcing humans to live beneath the surface to stay alive. In one of the sparse surviving shelters, an alarm blares and shouts fill the air as two panic-stricken individuals dash down a corridor, fleeing from some menacing entity behind them. They arrive at an exit, but to their dismay, it's secured, and they are overtaken and slain by their pursuer. Elsewhere in another refuge, Sam is out mending communication dishes when he spots a group of men emerging. An ill man pleads for an additional day to recuperate, but Mason, dismissive of the waste of supplies, is prepared to eliminate him, overlooking the ill man's request for the walk. Sam steps in and insists that Mason should honor the rule that ill folks get to choose either to leave on their own or be executed, yet Mason is indifferent and ends the man's life, justifying it as a necessity for their communal survival. As Sam heads back indoors, it becomes clear that the intense fear of even minor illnesses, like the common cold grips this small band of survivors, because the last time a flu outbreak occurred, it resulted in 20 deaths within a week. Consequently, their chief, Briggs, enacted a strict policy. Those who fall sick are quarantined, and if their health doesn't improve, they must decide between a merciful death or a perilous journey out into the icy wilderness. The inhabitants of this shelter strive to support each other, cultivating what seeds they can, but their numbers aren't what they once were, as food becomes increasingly rare year after year. Whispers of a distant utopia with a warmer climate circulate, but Sam remains skeptical. Sam seeks out Briggs to report Mason's violation of their laws, but Briggs is preoccupied with a more pressing issue. They proceed to the communications hub, where Cooper reveals that an SOS signal was received from Colony 5, but there's no response to their return communications. Briggs organizes an urgent assembly in 30 minutes. Meanwhile, Sam visits Victor, who oversees the animal stocks, only to receive grim news. The latest batch of rabbit offspring was born dead, and from the 12 survivors, there is but one female that the rest refuse to breed with. Briggs confronts Mason to rebuke him for his actions, yet Mason stands by his choice, arguing that those who leave as walkers could return to steal their food. Later on, Sam meets up with his partner Kai who supplies him with feed for the rabbits while discussing her duties. She's convinced that technology for altering the weather is real and hidden beneath the ice, and she's determined to keep searching for it with their radar equipment, clinging to hope. Shortly after, the community assembles for their meeting. Dexter quietly warns his wife to suppress her coughs, and Sam, passing by, senses their illness and suggests they retreat to their quarters, but Dexter insists they're all right. Briggs then enters and alerts everyone about the distress from Colony 5 and declares his intention to lead a rescue mission. Mason opposes, citing the scarcity of resources and manpower, but his objections are dismissed. Briggs calls on Dexter to be part of the rescue team, but Sam steps in, offering to go in his stead to allow Dexter to tend to their power generators. Graydon, ignoring his own father Victor's objections, also steps up to join the mission. With the team formed, Briggs appoints Kai as the interim leader in their absence. Abruptly, Dexter's wife sneezes, causing a stir among the group who distance themselves from the couple, leading to their immediate isolation. Mason speaks out once more, suggesting they should be tested right away and doubting Kay's leadership abilities, but Briggs intervenes, telling him to wait for his return before making any decisions about the quarantined pair. In a snowstorm, a young boy struggles through the wind, only to be horrified by the sight of his mother lifeless on the snowy ground. This is revealed to be a bad dream of Sam's about his mother's demise, from which he is soothed by Kai, who reassures him that he wasn't to blame. The following day, the team embarks on their journey, braving the extensive walk through the biting cold, the relentless snow, and fierce winds. Traversing a deserted city, they come upon an ancient machine designed to control the weather, only to find it non-functional. Shortly after, they arrive at a bridge and make their way across with extreme caution, which proves to be difficult given the bridge's deterioration over time. They navigate around the holes, and Briggs nearly takes a tumble, 
when a section of the bridge collapses beneath him, but he manages to dodge the fall just in time. On the other side, they stumble upon a vehicle with a deceased individual lying next to it, a firearm in his grasp. Upon closer examination, they discover his family lifeless within the car and deduce that he ended their lives before turning the gun on himself. After a lengthy trek through the snow, the group discovers a downed helicopter and decides to use it as a shelter for the night. Graydon, who has never witnessed a helicopter or airplane in flight, is fascinated by the concept. Briggs gets in touch with their home base for an update, and Cooper tells him that Dexter and his wife's condition is deteriorating. Mason is insistent on testing them, so Briggs authorizes Cooper to use physical force to keep Mason in check if necessary. Later on, Graydon uncovers a grimy magazine, prompting light-hearted ribbing from the others about his apparent interest in it. Briggs points out that this area is near where he found Sam, leading Sam to recount his past to Graydon. He talks about his childhood, when he and other survivors took refuge in mines. After exhausting their supplies and resorting to eating the animals, his father and some men went to the city for help but never returned. As their numbers dwindled, Sam attempted to lead his mother and sister to safety, but a snowstorm hit, scattering them, and he never saw them again. He would have perished if not for Briggs' timely rescue. The following day, as they arrive at Colony 5, the sight of blood outside the main entrance alarms them. Entering, they are hit by the stench of smoke. They descend the stairs and encounter more blood, indicating a violent event took place. This location is the same corridor from the story's opening. With the colony meant to house 50 people and no one in sight to greet them, the tension mounts. Handing Graydon a firearm as a precaution, they continue their search through blood-stained and wrecked corridors. Just as they're about to conclude that all the inhabitants are deceased, they're startled by a noise emanating from a locked room. Sam works the lock, and upon opening the door, they discover an individual collapsed on the floor. They approach him cautiously, only for the man named Leland, to abruptly plead for compassion. The three reassure him of their peaceful intentions, and he requests the door be shut again before accepting their offer of food and water. Tracked for days, Leland is uncertain if any other survived. He recounts how days earlier, his group fixed their antenna and received a broadcast, which he now plays for them. The transmission shows a man in a snowless region, who claims his team has managed to reactivate a climate control device, thawing the frozen earth and revealing fertile land. They only lack seeds to proceed. Sadly, the message is cut short, leaving the destination partly unheard. Leland says they pinpointed the signal's origin and dispatched a search party for this temperate zone, but instead of finding it, they attracted a perilous entity that followed them back, wreaking havoc on the colony. Sam has Leland mark the supposed location on his map. Briggs then suggests they should bring Leland back with them, but terror grips Leland at the thought of leaving his refuge, admitting he wasn't the source of the noise they had heard earlier. The group scavenges for useful items in the room, but they can't establish communication with their own base. As they attempt to lead Leland out, strange sounds spook him, and he dashes back inside, locking the door behind him. Left with no choice, the trio proceeds without him, only to be met with increasing clamor and shrieks as they delve deeper into the outpost. Nearing the source of some flickering torchlight, they are greeted by a horrific tableau, a man carving up a corpse with others consuming human remains. Alerted by their presence, the butcher turns aggressively towards them, but Sam is quick to shoot him. The gunfire rouses more of the cannibalistic horde from amidst the dead, and their leader lets out a call prompting a frenzied pursuit through the outpost's halls. Sam lands a shot on the leader's ear and downs another aggressor, but they're vastly outnumbered. In a desperate move, Briggs hurls a stick of dynamite, buying them a moment's respite. Amidst the chaos, Graydon becomes separated and narrowly avoids being caught, but is swiftly overwhelmed by the horde. Briggs and Sam rush in, engaging in a fierce battle, dispatching the cannibals one after another. Tragically, by the time they reach Graydon, he has succumbed to his injuries. Morning must wait, Briggs and Sam press on. Ascending the stairs, Sam eliminates another pursuer, but runs out of bullets, while Briggs collapses the staircase behind them to halt their advance. They confront yet another cannibal atop, 
and after an intense scuffle, Briggs emerges victorious. The cannibal pack witnesses their fallen comrade, and the leader howls in rage. Outside, Briggs uses another stick of dynamite to cave in the entryway, sealing the structure. In the snow's silence, they return to the helicopter, deciding to hunker down inside as the cold intensifies. Conversation turns to the desperate acts of the cannibals. Briggs reflects on his military past, recalling the brutality that emerged when resources dwindled and armed individuals seized control, leading to harsh decisions about life and death. Mason, once part of his unit, left with Briggs to seek a place free from such horrors. By dawn, they realize the cannibals are tracking them, approaching perilously close. Fearing the safety of their own colony, Sam panics, but Briggs assures him of a countermeasure. They dash across the bridge, making a daring leap to speed their escape. Strategically, they set dynamite by the bridge's breach, taking cover behind fragmented signage. The wind, however, extinguishes the fuse. Sam offers to reignite it, but Briggs insists on taking the risk. Battling the gusts to light the fuse, Briggs struggles as cannibals begin to leap across the gap, some plummeting to their doom. Briggs, having ignited the fuse, deliberately draws the cannibals closer. The resulting explosion claims his life and destroys the bridge's center, making it impassable. On the other side, the leader and a few cannibals survive, glaring at Sam, who quickly resumes his escape. Back at the outpost, Mason drags Dexter and his wife outside against their pleas. Mason eliminates the wife, but when he aims for Dexter, Kai intervenes, threatening Mason to halt. During a heated debate about leadership, Sam's cries for help distract them, allowing Dexter to flee. Kai moves to aid Sam, who collapses from the cold, only to be knocked unconscious by Mason. Hours later, Sam regains consciousness inside the outpost and sadly informs Victor of his son's fate. Mason then restrains Sam to a bed, announcing his takeover and implementing harsh survival rules. Sam reveals the horrors they encountered and the potential sanctuary he learned of from the video, but Mason dismisses his claims, leaving with the others. Before exiting, a young boy slips Sam the keys to his handcuffs. Meanwhile, Mason and Victor keep watch outside, seeing no immediate threat. Despite this, Victor suggests they stay vigilant, considering Sam's warning. They opt to use security cameras for broader surveillance, but are interrupted by news of Sam's escape. Sam, having found and freed Kai, uses her computer to validate the existence of a thawed area on the radar. The pair prepare to share their discovery, packing seeds, but are confronted by Mason and his men, who assert their authority. Abruptly, a loud commotion outside draws everyone's attention to the security cameras. The group watches in terror as the cannibals assault the doors, with the leader gruesomely displaying Dexter's dissevered head before shattering the camera lens. Convinced by Sam's urgency, Mason takes charge. He commands that all those capable of firing a gun arm themselves, while others must seek refuge in the vault. Cooper herds the colonists to safety and stands guard at the vault's entrance. As they brace for the entrance to be breached, the lights flicker off. Upon their return, the door swings open to an eerie silence. No assailants appear. Yet the noise of intruders echoes within the shelter. In a shocking moment, a cannibal emerges from the vents, confronting Cooper. Although Cooper fights back, he's overpowered and the cannibal heads towards the vault, which is promptly shut in his face. Elsewhere, a young girl seeking refuge is tragically caught and killed by another cannibal. The armed defenders now realize too late that the enemies are also in the vents. A brutal confrontation unfolds with casualties on both sides. Despite their efforts, the cannibals seem innumerable. In the chaos, Sam and Kai manage to flee, while Victor decides to make a stand, engaging in a fierce combat with the cannibal leader. Victor fights valiantly, but is ultimately slain. An injured mason retreats to a rune where a few survivors, unable to reach the vault, have taken cover. He slams the door just as Sam and Kai approach, blocking them out. As a cannibal draws near, a colonist incapacitates Mason, allowing Sam and Kai inside. However, the cannibal slips in two, but is swiftly taken down by Kai. They secure the door, but its integrity is in doubt as more cannibals hammer at it. Quick thinking Sam uncovers a vent, 
urging everyone to escape through it. Mason opposes, arguing the cold outside is certain death and that they should stand their ground. His pleas are ignored, and the survivors flee into the vent. Sam, after a brief pause to arm Mason, follows suit. Shortly after their departure, the cannibals smash through the door and descend upon Mason, who detonates a gas tank, engulfing them in flames. All but the leader are incinerated, who narrowly escapes into the vent. The leader, pursuing Sam, battles him in the vent, which collapses from their struggle, dumping them into the livestock area. The fight rages on, with Sam frantically wielding any object within reach against the cannibal. Yet the assailant dominates, relentlessly assaulting Sam. After absorbing a few strikes, the cannibal flings Sam to the ground and hauls him across the room, inadvertently allowing Sam to seize a dropped knife and wound his attacker in the leg. Now the tables turn, and it is Sam who gains the upper hand, furiously pummeling his opponent's face beyond recognition before gruesomely severing his head at the jawline. Attempting to escape, Sam encounters a corridor ablaze. Meanwhile, outside, Kai and the other survivors emerge from the vent to witness the destruction of their abode. Sam soon joins them, emerging from the vent as well, and insists they must embark on a journey to locate the promised haven mentioned in the message. Together, the group trudges through the snow-filled landscape, holding on to hope that they will soon find a new place to call home. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.